thinking soft shell crab. It's so tasty. So I was just checking to see what's on hand that may make a good garnish for a pan fried soft shell crab. Crab meat is my favorite protein from the sea, even taking into account lobster. Ounce for ounce crab meat may be just as expensive, but with soft shell, you get a nice serving of crab meat for a reasonable price. Soft crab has a season which goes from late spring through summer. I begin looking for them after the full moon of May or April if the full moon is late in the month. In Louisiana, you can expect the price to begin around $4 each and it increases according to size. A small or medium soft shell is a fair portion for one person. I serve my family two each with some on the side as spares and usually have them on toast points, but I've also used polenta cakes, artichoke bottoms, and arugula lettuce as a base under soft shell. I have one friend who has fond memories of visiting his grandmother as a child. He would say to her when he arrived, can I have a soft shell crab sandwich? They are good in sandwiches. Those were on sandwich bread. But in Louisiana, you can also find soft shell poor boy sandwiches in many good restaurants. So I'm leaning towards soft shell for this first demonstration, but thinking it's important to choose something simple to prepare. Oh, decisions, decisions. You know what? Let's ask G. What do you think about cooking soft shell crabs? Hmm. I agree. It's really easy. Packages of chanterelle mushrooms. Aren't I lucky? You can't always get them. Yum, yum. Thank you, ma'am. You're from Mississippi? Wow. Hi, are you from Louisiana? Yes, ma'am. Born and raised in New Orleans. Okay, now look at these little beauties. Sorry about the jiggling. How do you like to cook them? Fry. I take and remove the back flap. I remove the lungs. I also cut off the eyes, and then I remove the water bag. And the water bag is behind the head. It's under the top, and you just pull it out. Uh, now, these are not clean. We'll these are still whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. You want a half pound? Thank you. So here I am back at home in Minna's humble Cajun kitchen with my goodies from the farmers market. Here we have the chanterelle mushrooms. They have a, this tender but wider head and this gorgeous golden color. Back here are the eggs I got from the farmer's market. Let me show you. See this blue one? These have the best yolks. Whatever the breed is, they are not great laying hens, so he doesn't get them very often. So I've already broken open one of the brown eggs. Look at the color of this thing. Now this is not your supermarket egg. If you were making mayonnaise, it would have a wonderful color. Peaches I got, look, look, look at these beauties. If you could smell them. Now, people in Louisiana know you get the best peaches from Ruston, Louisiana. However, there's a place in Alabama, an, an area called Chilton, and they are absolutely the best peach producers I've ever tasted. And here are the soft shells. This is the back because of this shape. 
I know that this soft shelf is a female. Look how pliable they are. Okay, now as you watch, I've removed one of the soft shelves because that one will be frozen. And in a second, I'll show you how you wrap it to freeze it. You basically just, I like to put seasoning on it. And then I basically just pull it together so that the legs aren't sticking out. You kind of keep all the external parts close to the body like this and then wrap it in saran wrap. Then I stick that into a Ziploc bag to try to reduce any kind of freezer burn with that double layering. So you see, I just pulled out the gills on that side. They're nothing. You just pull them out. Some people find them, the texture objectionable. If it's just me, I wouldn't even do that. Okay, and some people pull this flap off. I don't do that either. I mean, it's crunchy when you fry it. Okay, so now here's the face. Some people object to the face of the crab. So you just take your kitchen shears or a sharp knife and cut just the face like that. See, I've cut off the face. And in doing so, there's a sack back here that I want to be sure to cut into so that it won't pop in the pan. Here's the pan we're going to cook in. So I'm going to, uh, you do that to both of them. And then I use this mixture of salt, uh, salt and red pepper. You can buy it all over Louisiana. I think you can buy it all over the country like so many um, products. Steen's cane syrup is one. Whew, I love that stuff. And it has more iron than other kinds of syrup, so it's good for you. A gastroenterologist mentioned that to me. So I have it on good authority. Okay, I have just prepared one soft shell crab, or cleaned it really. Next, I'll prepare an egg wash with this egg we already looked at. And I'll show you as I dip the crabs and get the pan ready. Okay, here's my bag of soft shell crabs. You see, this is the one that I just wrapped, seasoned it first. Then I put it in here and I take a little straw and suck the air out of the Ziploc bag. Um, anything to reduce the possibility of freezer burn. Okay, see, less air in the bag. It's a little difficult. I hope you're not getting seasick. So these go in the freezer. I had two from another shopping trip at a different seafood market. Okay, at this point, I have made a little scrambled egg mixture with that pretty egg. Still can't. At this point, you see I've got some things out. A semi mise en place. Uh, I'm going to use garlic in the oil, and here's how I do garlic to get the paper off. Um, I've seen a million cook shows with different ways of getting garlic mashed. So, Cajuns had a better idea a long time ago, and it is this, this thing. It mashes garlic. I mean, why, why make a paste? And there are several different, I have several of these. This is probably 30 years old or more. Look, here's another one. You see? You put your garlic in it and push through. For some of them, you don't even need to remove the paper. Okay, I've watched them all. I love Jacques Pepin. And he had, can't remember how he peeled garlic. But he did say, you can't just cut garlic. You have to mash it to get the flavor. You'll get, if you mash one garlic pod or two, um, you'll get more garlic flavor than if you cut a whole head of garlic. Okay, so I've added that. I'm saving the lemon for last. I, I'm just going to use a little butter like this. I'll start warming the pan. 
putting it on a medium flame. No rocket science yet, huh? Okay, I made a boo-boo, and I was talking away and explaining about cooking this sauce shell, and I had taken a photo, but the video wasn't moving. Okay, as you can see, I've already turned it over. The challenge to cooking a soft shell is to get the middle, which is the thickest part, well done without totally overcooking the claws and legs. So sometimes this is on a medium heat. Sometimes I kind of move it so that I can have the body over the heat and the, there's less heat over here continuing to cook the claws. I love, you, I can also take the whole pan and put it in the oven, in a warming oven, and it'll continue to cook, you know, slowly cook this middle part. I love cooking in this black iron cookware. I love it. I have collected mine over the years. I didn't buy the brand that's out there that starts with an L, only because I don't like the way the cooking surface looks. I found this in a little antique store in a tiny town in Texas. I mean, surround, it's in the scrub of Texas, not technically West Texas. It's called Three Rivers, Texas. And I went into an antique store and I saw this for less than $20. The cooking surface is satiny smooth. I mean, this pan has been cooking fish and whatever, bacon and whatever, for what, 50 or 100 years? And I love it. Okay, I just added two mushrooms. I didn't do anything to them. Once the crab is cooked and out of the pan, I'll add more butter. Look at those beauties, golden chanterelle. Okay, as you can see, I have added, I'm adding the chanterelles to the same pan I cooked in. Although I did use a paper toweling to take out some of the crusty things that might burn on the bottom and impart a little sharp flavor. But this is basically olive oil butter and chanterelle mushrooms. Let's give it a sh little shot of salt. Now that the mushrooms have started, they say you shouldn't apply the salt too soon. You have to let the mushrooms get started. They probably are not started enough. However, I've got the salt out. I'm doing it. Heck on that. <laughs> All things can happen in Minna's humble kitchen. By the way, this is my humble kitchen. The kitchen in the icon is not humble. It's more of a designer kitchen. I happen to be visiting G, whose father is my son. So that lovely kitchen is at their house. And as I said, it's not humble. It's a beautiful designer kitchen. This one is mine. This is the humble one. Okay, I'm just letting the mushrooms go. There's one of the soft shell crabs all finished. I have a few more minutes to go, and then I'll beautify the plate with these chanterelle mushrooms and finish the presentation. Okay, we're just about done. All right, now garnish this with chopped parsley. And there we have it, a completed soft shell crab. Not hard, in fact, very easy, and to die for. Bon appétit. Have you noticed that I haven't said anything about deep frying? I don't care how many restaurants offer deep fried soft shell. It's a bad idea. If you do that, a sweet little crab has lost its life for nothing.
Deep frying strips out all the delicate flavor and cooks the CRAP out of the legs and claws and everything. Don't do it. In fact, I'm going to ask the Louisiana State Legislature to make it a felony to deep fry a soft shell crab. That's my last word on the subject. To show you the difference, this one is a male. See the difference in the shape of the apron, which is the hinged flap on the back? It's just pointed. Kind of a phallic symbol. Whatever. Some people remove it before cooking. It doesn't matter to me. It does not have an objectionable flavor. For this one, I'm not even using kitchen shears. I'm just barely cutting off the eyes. You see? And discarding. Once both eyes are removed, I'm going to poke right here to make sure that little bladder will not pop in the pan because it's already pierced. Once again, I have just seasoned them with a combination of salt and red pepper and then tossed them around in flour or corn, very fine corn flour to prepare them for the pan. Just get the stuff on there and into the pan you go. Here are two that I've transferred out of the frying pan into a smaller pan with paper toweling under them and I'm going to slip them into a 280 degree oven to keep warm and so that the middle will get a little more solid without burning the claws while I just do other things in the kitchen. A plate of artichoke bottoms. Here's the pan that the mushrooms were sautéed in. It's butter, garlic, and lemon juice. Well, barely any lemon juice yet. I'm throwing in half a cup or a little less of almonds. Okay, see how the almonds have grown a, gone to a toasty golden color? Almost brown. At this point, I will put in the juice of a lemon. I've surrounded the crab and artichoke bottoms with sautéed golden chanterelle mushrooms. Now here goes a dusting of finely chopped parsley. Okay. I've taken the almondine sauce off the burner. In fact, I put it into this white bowl because the almonds were getting more brown than I like. I prefer a golden color, a toasted color. So the piece de resistance will be adding the almondine sauce, just drizzling it over this crab recipe. Just drizzle it over. We don't want to have a heart attack, but it is nice to have some sauce on the bottom for that artichoke. Okay, now we've got soft shell crab almondine. Enjoy.